discuss the use of the put call ratio as a predictor of the underlying price. Uh, we're going to look at the broad market. We're going to look at individual stocks, individual futures. Uh, we're going to try to get under, under, under the hood on this uh, pretty deeply. Uh, we'll be looking at um, the computer analysis that uh, predicts how these ratios uh, reach their levels. And um, so, uh, if you've heard some of these things before, uh, hopefully the review will also be good for you. Uh, we can calculate a put-call ratio on anything that trades options. So it doesn't have to be just a stock. Uh, it can be a, a group of options, like all the different futures uh, months on a, a futures contract. Uh, and we're looking at the ratio of puts traded to calls traded. The concept was first introduced by Marty Zweig back in the 1950s when he got the uh, put and call volumes out of the uh, Barron's ads from the put and call dealers. And um, he noticed that it was a contrary indicator. Uh, we can calculate this in a couple of ways. Uh, the first and typical way is to calculate the standard put call ratio, which is just using the volume of the options. But in more recent years, with the computer coming along and being very helpful, we can calculate the dollar weighted put call ratio, where we multiply the volume in an option by its price. Um, again, as I said, we can do this in any stock index or sector. Uh, sector, <laughs> sector options are not that useful anymore it used to be uh, you'd have certain sectors that you know like the semiconductors or um, you know something like that but we're we've moved away from those in favor of ETFs in recent years so really that's where the uh, action is uh, in terms of volume option volume and of course the put call ratios don't make any sense unless you have some activity going on um, we can calculate the ratio for all equity options, which is what we use for predicting the movement of the broad stock market. And we can calculate it for futures options on any single underlying commodity, say gold. Uh, we wouldn't want to mix gold and cotton, for example. So uh, like all futures options wouldn't make any sense, but all futures options on gold, you know, of course, would make some sense. The uh, theory is that if there's if everyone is buying puts, if there's too much put buying, then everybody's loaded up on that side of the trade, and it's contrary, so it's time for the market to go up. Obviously, if everybody's bearish, the market's been going down for a while, so uh, that would be a, a contrary bullish indicator. Conversely, if everybody's buying calls, that means the market's been going up for probably a fairly long time, and uh, when they're pretty much fully loaded up on their call buying, then uh, it would be a bearish signal for the uh, stock market or the stock itself. Um, again, let's, uh, it, it's very simple to calculate. Let's suppose you're, you're looking at IBM um, and we calculate, we sum up the volume of all the puts that traded that day, we sum up the volume of all the calls, divide the two, we get the put call ratio. Now, uh, Marty's wide put, puts in the numerator of that fraction and calls it in the denominator. So as a result, the put call ratio moves opposite to the direction of the underlying. So when there's heavy put trading, for example, the put call ratio will go higher, puts are in the numerator. But there's typically heavy put trading when the stock is going lower. So it moves opposite. And similar with calls, if the, since it's in the denominator, heavy call buying would make the ratio move lower but typically there's heavy call buying when the stock is moving higher. So again, moving opposite. Uh, why he didn't use a call put ratio, I don't have any idea. And some technical websites will actually show you a call put ratio saying that it's easier to spot uh, market tops with a call put ratio than with a put call ratio. But in any case, um, we pretty much just stick with the traditional put call ratio. We use a 21 day moving average just in case there's something to Fibonacci on um, most of our trades, uh, most of our ratios. So typically we would want to see this. Uh, 
per, in the perfect world, we'd have a complete uh, mirror image between the stock price on top here and the put call ratio on the bottom. For example, as the stock is declining, people are buying puts and they're making money during the trend, which is typical of contrary indicators. But when the trend ends, uh, people tend to overstay their welcome here. In this case, a local maximum on the put call ratio chart means that everybody's loaded up with puts and it's time to buy the stock. So a local maximum on the put call ratio chart is a buy signal for the stock. Hopefully it goes up from there. As the stock is going up, People, uh, stock is going up, people are buying calls, that forces the ratio lower. Eventually, the call buyers have been uh, satisfied and oversatisfied, and then put call ratio makes a local minimum. A local minimum is a sell signal for the stock. So you'll see that come up many times in the charts that follow. And uh, here's, uh, this isn't the current chart, but the S&P 500 is on top and the equity only put call ratio is on the bottom and you can see the inverse symmetry that exists. So that's why we use the equity only put call ratio uh, to predict the broad stock market. Um, this is uh, the current chart, but it's typical of charts of any year, or any time, and local maximums are buy signals uh, here and here, and uh, local minimums are sell signals like here and here. And uh, of course, on this chart, the uh, local um, local minimum has just occurred. We don't know what's going to happen here, but in theory, that's what's going to happen. Um, <clears throat> the weighted put call ratio came along once computers got involved, where you could do a lot of calculations quickly. And so, uh, what we're measuring here is the dollars being spent on these options, not just how many contracts are trading. So we take the volume of the option and we multiply it by its price. Now you could do that trade by trade all day long. Uh, that data is pretty expensive to get that kind of real time data and then ties up a lot of computer firepower making that calculation for every option trade that takes place. Uh, we tried that for a while, it was pretty expensive. And then we found out that we, or we determined that we can just use the options closing price and multiply it by the volume that traded that entire day and still get a very good measure of dollar volume. So at the end of the day, we make that calculation for every option on every stock and every futures contract. Let's say it's IBM again. Uh, we make those calculations. Then we sum up the ones for all the puts. Separately, we sum up the ones for all the calls, divide the two, and that's the dollar weighted put call ratio or just weighted put call ratio. And now we're, we're measuring the dollars being spent on bearish opinion versus the dollars being spent on bullish opinion. Typically, uh, it identifies uh, more extremes, so it gives us uh, a, a, a better idea as to whether this is really, really overbought or really, really oversold. Uh, and it, we could, of course, compute that on all the stocks and futures and indices that we were doing before. Um, I say here it slightly improves the timing of the signals. I mean, it's very slight, but in some cases, especially with stocks, the weighted put cut ratio is, I think, better than just the standard put cut ratio. For the broad market, for the equity only, not necessarily.